Hey everybody, welcome to the 8th episode of Pithatswap reporting using PS Query. And the topic for today is Subquery. So in this series, so far we have seen the fundamentals of PS Query and we have built some reports. Now it's time to take our reporting knowledge to the next level by understanding Subquery. Subqueries will help us build some complicated report in PS Query. So the agenda for today is that we will understand what exactly is a subquery, why do we need a subquery, and then we will see a couple of use cases to understand which scenario requires subquery, and then in PeopleSoft query, we will build these SQL from scratch. So that's the agenda for today, and without further delay, let's start with subquery. So to understand subquery, let's consider this example. We have a report request to display the business unit PO ID, PO date, and the vendor ID for all the POs belonging to PO US001 and supplier USA51. So if we prepare a report in PS query, the SQL will be like this. First, selecting the required fields from the PO header table where business unit is equal to US001 and the vendor ID equal to USA51. Now, this is a straightforward SQL in which the where criteria is fixed. So that means no matter that you run the query today or after 10 days, the where criteria, the query will remain the same and it will always give you the correct result for the required report. Now consider this second example. So we have a report request for same four fields for the same BU US001 and same supplier USA51. However, we need that report to include PO which are created on the most recent date for this business unit and for this supplier. So if we try to prepare a SQL for this report, it will be selecting the required fields from PO header table, where business unit is equal to US001 and vendor ID is equal to USA51, same as the previous example. But how would you know what is the most recent date on which the POs were created for US001 and US51? How would you know that? So you might take a look into database and you know that for this combination of PO and supplier, the most recent PO was say on 3rd of February. So you might add PO date is equal to 3rd of February and the report will be available. But what if somebody creates a PO after two days and then you run the report? In that case, the most recent date for this combination of PO and supplier will be 5th of February. You would need to change the date here. So if you see the key difference between first example and the second example is that in the first example, the where criteria was static. It was fixed no matter when you run the report. However, in the second example, the where criteria is not static because the PO date might change from time to time. You never know that. Also, in this case, we took a look into database and found that the PO date is 3rd of February for this case. But what if we don't know what is the most present PO date for this particular combination? How we would find that? So this is the case of subquery. When your where criteria is not fixed, you would need a subquery that would get the correct value for you and pass it to your SQL. So let's see how this would be solved using subquery. So using subquery, the SQL will be selecting the required fees from table. Then we will give the criteria which is fixed the business unit and the vendor ID and then we will say PO date equal to 
instead of hard coding the date, we will run another select statement. We will say select maximum of PO date. So using the max function, we will get the most recent PO date from the PO header table where the same criteria business unit should be US001 and the vendor ID should be USA51. So if you see the key difference here is that we have a select statement from here to here. Inside the select statement, we have another select statement. So this inner select statement is called as subquery. In the first example, we had only one select statement. So that was the main query. That was not the case of subquery. However, this example here is a case of subquery. So if you see one select statement, one or more select statement inside a parent select statement, then you can definitely say that this is an example of subquery. Now, what will happen is first, the database engine will execute the SQL, the inner select SQL, which is also called as the subquery. Let's say the most recent date is 3rd of February. So this SQL will pass the value of 3rd of February to this PO date, and then this complete SQL will be executed. Now, the best part is, as we discussed, what if somebody creates a PO after two days, that is 5th of February. So we don't need to worry because after running the SQL after two days, the inner SQL will pass the value as 5th of February. So in this case, we will always get the correct result using subquery. Now let's understand how to create subqueries for our example two. So let's create a new query. The table will be PO header table add a return, select the required fees for our report, and let's give criteria for business unit and supplier ID. Run the report, and the report is running. Now, in example two, we need to find POs created for this combination of business unit and vendor ID for the most recent day. So that means we need to give criteria for PO day. And here, because we do not know the date, we need to use subqueries to find that most recent date for this combination. So we will see subquery. And then we got this link as define and edit subquery. So once we click on this link, we move from our main query to the subquery section. As you can see, we have this navigation, subquery or union navigation. This was not present earlier. For example, let's say we try to create a new query. This navigation is no longer available. So this navigation becomes available when your query has at least one subquery or union. So if you click on this, you can see the top of the query. That means you are back to your topmost position in the query from where you started and where you gave the criteria. And you can see PO date is equal to subquery. So now if you wish to go into the subquery section, you need to click here and then you need to select this option. In case your SQL or your report has multiple subqueries, those will be available here. So for now, for our example, Let's click on that. And now we need to add the PO header table into our subquery. You can see working on selection subquery. So let's add a record. Now, one key difference between the main query and subquery is that in the main query, let's say you add the table as PO header you get to see these checkboxes. That means you can add multiple fields into your main query. However, for subquery, you can see select option for each field. That means you can select only one field in your subquery. Now, why is the case? Why your 
parent query allows you multiple fields and why does sub query allows only single field if you take a look at this example this happens because you are writing a criteria for only one field which is the PO date in this case you are writing this entire sub select or sub query for just one field that is the reason that your sub query should have also one field it cannot be the case that here one field can be compared here with two or three or four fields that is the reason sub queries can select only one field so since we are comparing with PO date let's select the PO date field and now we need the maximum PO date hence we can click on edit and then let's select the maximum value so that the maximum value will be available so at this point if we run the query the sub query will just find the maximum PO date from the header table irrespective of the business unit and vendor ID so since we are interested in the maximum date of a specific BU and vendor ID we need to give these two conditions in the sub query as well so let's go to criteria add criteria and let's select the field so here we can see the bio header table twice because the first table is coming from the main query and the second table is coming from the sub query so we will say show fields for the second table and then we will say business unit equal to us001 similarly the vendor id equal to usa zeros and then 51 click on ok now let's click on view sql then we are running the query for the header table with this criteria and then po date is equal to we are selecting the maximum po date from this table for the same criteria so if we click on the run then we got the result as expected for this particular supplier and bo combination on 3rd of february these two po's were created now to test the accuracy of this ps query let's create a new po in our system with today's date and this supplier and bo and see if that po appears in this report so let's click on new window and let's navigate to add update POs. We have the business unit as US001. Click on add. Now for supplier, let's use the same supplier here, USA051. Now let's add one item. let's say pure quantity is 2 click on refresh and let's click on save so now for this combination of business unit and the supplier we have the most recent PO created on this date which is PO ID 434 now let's rerun the query so let's click on rerun and as expected we can see that this required PO is appearing in the report because the most recent PO created is this one and the most recent date is 14th of February so as you can see this is the power of subquery so to summarize you can use subqueries in the scenarios where your where criteria is not fixed now let's consider another use case involving exist or non-exist criteria now you might be wondering what is exist and non-exist criteria in a sequel so consider this example when we create a purchase order its entry is created in PO header PO line PO ship and PO district so let's see this PO with PO US001 and PO 430 so if we query this table with this criteria 
the PO had a table has a row and hence we got the result. Similarly, if we use the same criteria and query the PO line table, then we got two rows because this PO has two lines. That means this particular transaction exists in both the table PO header as well as PO line. Now, let's say that we run this delete statement to delete this transaction from the PO header table. Let me run this delete statement. So I have deleted it and then I'm running the commit statement. Now if I query the PO header table for this particular transaction, I can no longer see the data because we have deleted. However, the data is present in the line table. That means the data exists in the line table. However, the same transaction does not exist in the PO header table. Now this is a case of orphan transaction or orphan data because in this case, PO header is a parent table and PO line is a child table. And the, this particular transaction is PO line is an orphan transaction because its data does not exist in the PO header table. Now, let's imagine that your client identified that unfortunately there are some orphan transactions in the PO line table and you need to build a report to find such orphan transactions. Now, how would you do that? You don't know the transactions, all you know is that the transaction exists in the line table and the transaction does not exist in the header table. So let's see how we can use subquery to find such POs. So let's create a new query. The record name will be PO line because we will start with the PO line table. Add a record. Let's select the just unit PO ID, line number and item ID three. Now, in the criteria, we need to find for all the business unit. So we will not give the criteria of business unit, but the condition is that particular transaction does not exist in the header table. So we will click on add criteria and in the condition type, we will select does not exist. So when we say does not exist, we do not need to provide anything in the top section of the query because that does not require comparison. Hence, with does not exist, we can see we have only one option, which is subquery. So we will go to define edit subquery. And then here, we need to find the transaction which does not exist in the header table. So we will say the table to be PO header table. Add a record. Let's select PO ID as one of the three. And then we need to join PO line table with this PO header table. Then only the does not exist comparison will go correct. So we will click on criteria, add criteria, and let's join this two table. So this is from the main query. We will say business unit is equal to fee. This should be same of the business unit of the subquery record, which is PO header. Similarly, let's join using PO ID. So PO ID from PO line table should be the same as PO ID from the PO header table. Click on OK, view SQL, and then click on run. So as expected, we got this PO 430, which we just deleted from the PO header table. And we got two lines. These are the line numbers because this PO has two lines in the line table. So in this case, subqueries can be very useful to create exist and does not exist criteria. So with this example, we conclude today's episode. If you found this video helpful, then please like this video. And if you are interested in more of such PeopleSoft content, then please subscribe to PeopleSoft channel. Thank you.